In this video we're going to go through the rail system in Astroneer, so we'll go through all of the items you can build and how you can put them together to make an actual rail system. Uh, stick around till later in the video, I'll show you some automation you can do with the rail system as well. But let's face it, we're probably just going to make roller coasters through caves, aren't we? Okay, the first two items are the rail post and the tall rail post. They cost 750 bytes each to research. They are different items, so you will have to research them separately. And they cost one resin and one aluminum to build, but that is for a bundle of 10. As you may have guessed from the power connectors on the base of the post, the rails can carry power, but they also carry oxygen. I can see me taking these instead of tethers, but we'll get back to that later on. Like tethers, rail posts will automatically connect to each other if they are in the right distance from and orientation to another rail post or another rail item. They can also be placed on any surface, meaning you can place them on walls and ceilings if you need. Each post has two pins that can be used as a trigger for just about anything in the same way as sensors. You can also call rail vehicles to any post, which I will show you later in the video. Next we have the rail junction. This costs 1000 bytes to research and they take two aluminum to build, but that is for a bundle of five. The rail junction basically connects three sections of rail. You can manually cycle through the route options at the junction by pressing F and you can press left or right when approaching a junction on a train to select which direction to take. Like the rail posts, junctions also carry power and oxygen and they've got three pin slots that will allow you to automate the junction. When a pin slot is triggered, the two sections either side of that pin will connect. Next we have the rail station. This costs 2,500 bytes to research and it requires two titanium, one copper and one quartz to build. The rail station will act as a hub for automating your rails, but it should be said that you don't need a station to set up basic automation. Each station has one large slot for a module or storage. There are also two target pins and two pin slots. The target pins will activate whenever a train passes through the station or stops at the station. Triggering a pin slot will cause any train stopped at the station to be sent out in the direction of that pin slot. There are two different settings for the station, stopping and loading. Stopping can be set to never stop trains, stop all trains, or only stop uncalled trains. This means the station will only stop trains that the player is riding, or trains that have not been called by another station or rail post that's connected to that station. Don't worry, I'll show you how that works a bit later in the video. Loading can be set to load stop trains, unload, or neither. When set to load, any items stored will, in the station will be loaded on the stop train until it is full. When set to unload, the stop train will be emptied into storage on the station until the station is full. There is also a slot next to the control panel for a beacon to help me remember where I am. You might not need this, but I definitely do. And finally, for the rail items, we have the vehicles. First, we have the rail car. This is 1500 bytes to research and will cost two resin and one aluminum to build. The rail car consumes one unit of power per second. You can power it via the rails or from the car itself. Each rail car has one large slot, as you can see. Next, we have the rail engine. This is a thousand bytes to research and will cost uh, one resin, one aluminum and one copper to build. The rail engine uses three power per second and allows you to ride and control a train, although you can just add the rover seat to the rail car, but that wastes good storage space. The rail engine also has small slots on the side of the front, as you can see. Main benefit to the rail engines is they increase the speed that the train will travel at. Rail engines can also be used in automation, you don't have to manually control them. And last but certainly not least is Computer Operated Logistics Engine, C-O-L-E, or just COAL if you prefer. This happy chap is only available through a mission in adventure games and you can only have one coal per save. Coal acts exactly like the rail engine but is slightly faster again. In terms of what you can actually do with the trains, you can connect up to six vehicles in a single train. You can have an engine or coal at either end of the train, but it will only increase the speed once it doesn't stack. Air storage sensors attached to a train will monitor storage for the whole train, not just the car they're attached to, so that can be useful. Okay, so what can you do with rails and automation? I've set up this first very basic example of using the rails to help you gather resources. At one end, I've just got a rail post, no need for a station for this setup. 
There's an auto arm position to pull resources from a train and in this case feed it into a large storage canister but you could easily set this up with one of the sorting systems I showed you in my previous video which you can check out here. I've also got an oxygenator and power from an RTG just to show you how this would work you'd probably have this set up at or near your base anyway. If you want to preserve power you can also take one of the pins from the rail post and use it to activate the auto arm only when the train arrives but that's up to you. As you can see here rail posts will build on walls. At the other end again the line just ends in a rail post. If I use the rail post I can call the rail car to me. The rail post will always call the nearest rail car if there's multiple on the, on the lines. I've got a single rail car with two medium storage attached. I also have a storage sensor set to full or empty with the pin attached to the car itself. Now, as I mine away at the resources, I can pop back to this rail car and fill it up. Because of the storage sensor, when it gets to full, it will start the rail car. At the other end, the auto arm empties the rail car into the storage. Once it's empty again, the car, rail car will return. one reason why I said I'll probably replace tethers with rails. It carries oxygen and power but also means you can keep on gathering away and just have to pop back to the rail car every now and then. But they also have another trick. When you place a rail post it automatically makes enough room for the train as well. This means you can also use it to cut through caves almost like placing a tether and digging at the same time. Here's another quick example of how you can use the trains. This train is traveling around in a loop between my base and two auto extractors. At each point there is a station and each station has storage and a delay repeater attached to one end of the station. All of the stations are set to stop all cars. This station at my base is set to unload stopped cars and the other two are set to load all cars. As the train arrives at the station it triggers the repeater and unloads or loads the cars and the repeater then triggers the train to leave once the time has run out. I'll look at more advanced ways to use rails in another video. Check out the videos on screen now for more help with Astroneer. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.